Hey, my friends, welcome, welcome. This is Joshua Latimer. We're going to get started here on the gratitude effect. The gratitude effect. Now, you've probably never heard that phrase. Uh, my subtitle is The Science of Business Growth. Now, this is an absolutely incredible, potentially life-changing in regards to your business piece of information to understand. I think most people miss this. They don't understand it. And really, the gratitude effect, which is an actual scientific term, and I'm going to get into that, is something I've known about for many, many years, but I've never done an actual teaching on it uh, to, to lay it out in the way that I'm about to. I think you're really going to enjoy this. So let's talk about it. The subtitle, The Science of Business Growth. This is unbelievable stuff, guys. So I want to be clear that this presentation, this training, this workshop, okay, is not about opinion or conjecture. It's not something I made up. No opinion is discussed here. Everything I'm about to teach you is a fact, okay? It's science and math. I'm going to get into it. And it works every single time, 100% of the time. And here is my claim. My claim is simple, okay, is that you could double your business, probably triple or quadruple your business, but I'm going to say double for sure, your business without finding any new customers, without you chasing after new customers through all the different ways that we market our business, always chasing the carrot. But there are some requirements. So here, here are the requirements, okay? You have to have at least some existing customers now. You have to do good work. You have to be a man or a woman of integrity. You have to do the right thing, right? And you have to have a desire to grow. If you don't have a desire to grow your business, I don't know why you're surfing the web watching this right now because this is a, a workshop for people that want to grow. They want their business to be bigger than it is. They want it to be more successful than it is. And lastly, you have to have a business that, that somehow relies either on referrals or on repeat service, right? So all the home service industries, realtors, uh, insurance agents, there's a million, million different industries where it's applicable to. Uh, but if these are true about you, this could change everything for you. So brief history about me so you know who is speaking to you and who's teaching you this. I started a window and pressure cleaning business in uh, Michigan uh, about 10 years ago or so. And the first couple years were pain and suffering. <laughs> I, I actually always joke that I have a, a bachelor's degree in pain and a master's in suffering. And the reason it was hard the first two years, the reason my wife got her debit card declined at the grocery store and we, we didn't have any money and it was a mess it was because I did not understand the importance of systems or relationship marketing. And we're going to talk about relationship marketing here today and how big of a deal it is. Um, now, in year three, everything kind of pivoted for me. That's when I started working on my business instead of in my business, right? You've heard that before, the e-myth thing, Michael Gerber. Um, but I finally understood what that meant. I started putting systems in place, specifically relationship marketing systems, and we started growing like a rocket ship. We had massive growth. We started doing 20, 30, 40 plus thousand dollars a week, did over 150,000 a month. In fact, the month I sold it, it was closer to 200,000 that month. Uh, and again, like I said, I sold it. I moved to Costa Rica with my family. I have four kids. I'm an entrepreneur. I love this stuff. And I really like teaching other business owners how to get unstuck. And, and what I'm going to show you today, I am so excited about, okay? Briefly, here's a picture of me and my wife on date night in Costa Rica. That's a picture of my pool and my little grill out area in our backyard. That's where the monkeys would come down and hang out at our house. My three boys are in the bottom left. And my beautiful baby girl, Finley, in the bottom middle. And then the van, okay? This is actually a mini bus, a diesel minibus. I just threw that in there. I bought that in Costa Rica. And actually, fun fact, I ran over a monkey in that bus. I ran over a monkey. And then my bus got stolen. So there you go. Costa Rica is not all cupcakes and unicorns. Uh, weird stuff happens in Central America too. So I still, I have no idea where the bus is. It's gone. They stole it right out of my driveway. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about business. So the big myth of business growth, okay, is that you have to chase the carrot. You have to do this and you have to do that. And there's always a new thing and there's always a new strategy. You got social media and emails and uh, radio and newspapers and EDDM and five rounds and yellow pages and Facebook ads and flyers and postcards and on and on and on. And there's more stuff that's not even on this list. And it can be overwhelming. It can be completely overwhelming when you try to unpack this stuff and what do I do? How do I grow my business, right? And it's tricky. There's not an easy answer, okay? Uh, Facebook ads are all the rage right now for local businesses. They work well. You can do all this, you know, super specific granular targeting. There's all kinds of other things you can do with EDDM. It's very popular. And it, but the bottom line is, is that 
people are doing all these things, but they're not getting the results that they want. Their business isn't growing as fast as they want. I work with hundreds of people one-on-one, and most of the, the people I work with are stuck or they've been stuck for sometimes over 10 years where they get new customers, but their total revenue doesn't grow. Their business is flat. And, and it's stressful and it causes overwhelm. So we're going to call it marketing overwhelm, but really just general overwhelm. You know, what do I do next? What do I do in the right order? What am I missing? How come these guys have million dollar businesses and mine is stuck at 200,000? I'm going to teach you how to break through that ceiling. And I want to ask you a question. Okay. What if the real key to massive growth was right in front of you the entire time? What if you didn't need the latest copy or the exact wording for a Facebook ad or some EDDM campaign that costs, you know, thousands of dollars that you really don't understand? But what if it's none of that? What if it's right in front of you? What if you've had everything you've needed to double your business and it was right in your front pocket? You just didn't know it. I bet that's the case for a lot of the guys watching this webinar, and girls, of course. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, he was a pretty smart guy, right? <laughs> a pretty smart guy from history. I love this quote from him. It says, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. I love that. And you see, the key to real business growth is it needs to be simple. Of course, it needs to be organized. And lastly, this is the one people miss the most. It needs to be consistent. And that can be hard. You're running estimates. You're answering the phone. You're the HR guy. You're firing. You're hiring. You're cleaning. You're working. You're in the field. I get, I get all that. But growing your business is much simpler than most of the small businesses out there realize. Way more simple. Okay? One of the quotes I say all the time is that small business owners know how to make easy complicated right? <laughs> we know how to take something pretty simple and make it 32,000 bullet points of complex craziness. Uh, and we don't need to do that. That's crazy. Now with relationship marketing, okay, and the gratitude effect, which I'm going to explain here in a minute, there's not those ups and downs in your season where you're so busy, you can't do any marketing. And then you're so slow, you have no work. And then you try to do all this stuff and it doesn't, it doesn't work right. There's no smoothness to your revenue. It's a total cliff and a total peak and a total valley, right? Um, what we're going to teach you today is consistent. It's scalable to the moon. If you're an owner operator, if it's just you, it works. If you have 150 employees, like some of my friends have cleaning businesses with over 150 employees, it works for them too. It's simple. It's easy. And it's very, very low cost, very low cost. And, but I want to ask you a question here. Where is the greatest potential for growth in your business? If we listed out all the stuff, and I know this isn't a, a complete comprehensive list. There's, there's more stuff. But these are some of the ones I thought of that I've used in my business in the past, right? Where is the greatest potential for growth? Which one of these little mountains here do you think has the most explosive potential for your business? Got any guesses? It may be unexpected. Here it is. It's your current customers, your current book of business. All the people that have hired you in the last couple years, the last few years to do the stuff that you do. They've paid you money. They've done business with you. They've transacted with you in whatever way that looks like for your business. Those people are your number one singular, most powerful neutron bomb of, bomb of nuclear fission, you know, explosive growth potential is your current customers. And people do not see it that way. And there's people are skeptical of that. Well, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you that this is where the real growth lies. And this is what separates the, the winners from the losers a lot of cases. Okay, first I want to start with a statistic from the White House Office of Consumer Affairs. On average, loyal customers are worth up to 10 times as much as their first purchase. So, I don't know, what, what's your initial transaction amount? What's your average ticket? Is it like 300 bucks, 400, $500? Well, that customer is actually worth, if they're loyal, if they're loyal, $3,000, $5,000. What would it do for your business if every person you got for $300 turned into $3,000? Or every $500 deal turned into $5,000 deals, right? I know this varies a little bit with businesses, but the thing that people miss is the loyal, the word loyal. They don't know how to generate loyalty. They think that if they do a good job, then they have a loyal customer. That's not true. That's not true because there's not a relationship established. I'm going to teach you how to establish these relationships and how to maximize this statistic in your business. Now, but let's talk about the gratitude effect specifically. Okay, it's incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. You can't even imagine. 
Now, the gratitude effect is, is not something I made up. This is a psychological phenomenon that's well-researched with peer-reviewed you know, uh, institutional studies and university studies, right? And the one I'm going to reference here, to keep it brief, is a 2010 American Psychological Association study. Uh, multiple, multiple pages, four different experiments, you know, the double-blind placebo effect, all that stuff. It's a technical paper. Uh, and the title of this particular one, if you want to look it up, is A Little Thanks Goes a Long Way, explaining why gratitude expressions motivate pro-social behavior. Now, I'm not trying to get all nerdy on you, but I want you to understand something, okay? Gratitude motivates pro-social behavior. Wrap your head around how that applies to your business, okay? You want your customers to talk about your business. You want them to actually refer you to their neighbor or to their weird uncle or to their, to their best friend in the town across from your town. It starts with gratitude. It starts with an emotional response to your company. And there's ways you can control this that are not complicated and it's very, very powerful. So let's talk about what this study proved. Okay, just one of many, by the way. First of all, it, impro it, it, it proves that when you are thankful for your customers and you thank them and you engage them in relationship marketing, when you actually stay in front of them and you have a two-way relationship, uh, when you do that, you flat out will get repeat business a lot more often. People buy more stuff and more often from people they feel valued by. So let me ask you a question. How do your customers know that they're valued by you? Because you told them for 10 seconds as you walked out the door with their check, right? Well, if you uh, institute a relationship marketing campaign, which is simple, in your business, you're going to get more repeat business from them. They're, they're also going to get positive feelings. And I teach on my other trainings and webinars all the time, okay, that when you thank your customers, when you gift them, when you have a relationship with them, obviously they're, it's part of the customer experience. And people really purchase experiences, not just products and services. And many of you know that. But this study points out scientifically that when, when they feel those feelings, it allows them to savor the experience of doing business with you. Now think about that for a second. You might just clean a carpet or, or mow a lawn or wash a house or something. But when, when they feel engaged with you and they, there's a brief emotional spark there because you, you, you are thankful and then you followed up afterwards and you continue to follow up, it allows them to, to dwell on what it felt like doing business with you. That's amazing. You're going to get more referrals. Uh, I also read a statistic that the average U.S. consumer references 60 name brand products and services per week. 60. 60. Are they talking about you? You? Are you one of the 60? Well, I don't know. But the only ones that people talk about are the ones that they get an emotional connection out of. They feel good about themselves by buying or using that product or service. So the point is this. When people have the gratitude effect triggered in their brain from your company, they can't stop talking about your product or service when it's relevant in their life. They can't not do it because it makes them feel good. It's literally a dopamine drug high. <laughs> and it might sound like I'm being over the top, but I'm not. This is real. This is literal, okay? There's these little, you know, receptors in your brain. And when they remember, uh, even though a lot of this is subconscious, they feel warm and fuzzy in a literal way. Uh, when they get the opportunity to refer your business. So they do it. They do it every chance they can. The last thing the study points out is that they become advocates. The gratitude effect creates a mind of advocacy, and it draws people in to become defenders of your business, right? They're, they're, they're like a little army of people that will defend your honor. Not that your honor has to be defended, but imagine if you have a thousand customers in your business, imagine if you know half of them you know, displayed these, these traits about your company. What would that do for you, right? Okay, let's keep going. Here's the deal. We don't need a university paper to, to, for this to make sense for us. We just don't. It's common sense. You know why? Because we're consumers too. We buy stuff too. When you buy an iPhone in 2009 and it's the greatest thing ever and you can't believe how cool you f feel for having it, you're showing it to everybody you're talking about it, right? Um, and it, it's, it's, it's as simple as this. You have you, you have your client, and then you have the repeat business and referrals. Now, you have automatically some people that do repeat business with you, but what you don't understand is all those people that haven't called you back yet, they might have forgot your number, forgot the name of your company, hired someone else, moved on, feel disenchanted or disengaged. You just don't know. You only know the people that call you back, but there is a huge percentage of your book of business that are not coming back, my friend. So when you thank them, when you send them a small gift, when you engage in a relationship, 
is going to literally directly result in more money. And honestly, I think it's common sense, but it's nice to have a paper like that to back it up. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. Here's what small business owners think that they are. They think that they're a lion. They're a hungry lion especially the young hustlers out there, people that are like, oh, you know, the Grant Cardone people, and they're like, yeah, grind, got to get up and grind. You know, you're a lion, and you have to go get a gazelle. Now, the gazelle are your customers, right? We think our customers are like a gazelle. They're a meal. It's a meal for us, right? And so we think that getting the sale is like this. <laughs> this, this is how we view getting a sale. Like, you close the deal. You're so awesome, right? And I have nothing against closing the deal. Closing the deal is great. Okay, but we, we're thinking of ourselves in the wrong way. And almost everyone I work with has this mentality. Uh, and it's the wrong mentality. There is a better way, a much better way. And we need to stop being a hunter and start being a farmer. Now, let me explain, okay, because this is profound, okay? Your customers are not gazelles, your customers are tomatoes. And you're a tomato farmer. <laughs> this looks like some, like, hundred million dollar professional tomato thing or something, but you're a tomato farmer. So you don't have to kill a gazelle and then go find another gazelle and kill it and then find another gazelle and kill it. You have to cultivate through relationship marketing, your current book of business. You're going to get more referrals, more repeat business. You're going to get a higher average ticket. You're going to get loyalty and advocacy and all these, you know, warm, fuzzy feelings by being a farmer. Okay. So your customers aren't gazelles, they're tomatoes. Okay. Let's go back to the statistic one more time before we move on. Loyal customers are worth up to 10 times as much as their first purchase. And when you have the lion's mentality, you're solely focused on the transaction. The transaction, that's it. And you need to be focused on the relationship. And that initial transaction is only the very beginning of a much bigger, much longer, much more important total relationship, right? It's kind of like a first date in a way, even though you get paid for it. Okay, but here's another thing with the psychological uh, phenomenon known as, as the gratitude effect is that this can be applied not just to your customers. And this is another huge blind spot that really doesn't cost anything, really. Uh, it just takes some focused effort and being aware of it. But you can trigger, and that's what they call it, triggering. You can trigger the gratitude effect in your employees uh, and in your current customers. You can trigger it in um you know, other people as well, like influencers, gatekeepers, people that hold the keys or they, they, they have access to people that could become your customers, people that are heavy referrers to you. What do you do when someone refers you? You know, that's a really critical thing. If you get a referral, someone calls your business and says, yeah, I got a referred from my friend Mary. Does that data get followed up with? Does Mary get a big giant, you know, digital hug or some, something in the mail or something, a phone call from you? Because if you're not doing it, they will trickle away and go away. If you are doing it, they will never, ever stop. These will be human commission-free salespeople for you. So the gratitude effect with the employees as well is really, really important. So we're going to talk briefly about that for a minute too, because uh, with your customers, and with your employees are the two big ones uh, for this particular workshop I want to focus on with the gratitude effect. And with your employees, there's a lot of studies on this too. And I did some research here. Uh, companies with engaged employees, one study finds, have 147% higher earnings per share than companies with less engaged uh, employees, right? The second part says when organizations or small businesses successfully engage their, their, uh, their customers and the employees... They experience a 240% boost in performance. Now, let me ask you a question. Think of uh, your laziest employee. <laughs> Think of your slowest employee, right? What if he could increase his performance by 2.4%, 240%? They could almost triple their productivity in your business. Is that really possible? Well, the Gallup State of American Workplace report says yes, and that is a very prestigious thing. And you know what? Again, this is common sense. You know, employees are not commodities. They're humans. They have feelings and needs and emotions and all kinds of weird stuff going on in their brain. But why do we as small business owners not even have a basic strategy in place to make sure that we're engaging them, 
that there's relationship marketing going on there, that we're following up and really understanding who they are as people. So study after study shows the power of this stuff. And with customers, again, uh, we all know some of these statistics. It can cost five times more to acquire a new customer than ret to retain an existing customer. I've seen other reports that say it's seven or eight times as expensive. So we'll spend all this money on Facebook ads, EDDM, direct mail, door knocking, door hangers, radio, TV, whatever, newspaper inserts, whatever, but we don't spend anything nurturing our current customers. It's pure madness. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, also, if you re reduce your customer defection, which is just by 5%, right? The amount of people that are going to leave, they're not going to hire you again. If you can decrease that just by 5%, you can increase your profit by at least 25% and as much as 125%. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't care how small your business is. You better understand that retention, keeping the people you already have, is is got to be at the top of the list. Before you become a copy master on Facebook or uh, an EDDM ninja, you need to have this foundational thing understood in your business first. Also, 70% of the people that do business with you, it's large. the large part of why they do it is because of the way it makes them feel. Do we really need to be told this? This is true from music to clothing to food. I mean, the way you feel when you eat a $200 meal is different than the way you feel when you eat a $10 meal, right? Your business is just like that. It's just like that. It's the same. So the way you make your customers feel directly and always impacts the amount of times they're going to repeat with you and the amount of times they're going to refer you. Uh, the last stat here, and then we'll move on, is 65% of new business comes from referrals. Now, this varies depending on the industry you're in, of course, uh, but that's huge, okay? Word of mouth is massive, so why do we not build strategies and techniques focused specifically on this to maximize it? Because these things are happening. If you're not getting any referrals, by the way, you probably aren't making your customers feel unique, special, engaged at all when they do do business with you. And you might be very good technically at what you do and still you can miss that side of it completely completely uh, you know if you're an introvert and you never engage your customers and whatnot so I want to ask you a question do you love your clients right <laughs> it's a silly question you're like well no I don't love them I just deal with them well hopefully that's not the case I know you love your clients they pay your bills they they get put food on the table and clothes on your kids back. You know that they're important. I know that you know that. But here's the real question. How do they know that? How do your clients know that you love them? Because you cleaned their thing good and you mowed their lawn good and you did the HVAC and the plumbing good because you did the right thing? No, you're, of course you're supposed to do that good. That, that's just baseline business. How do they know that you care about them in an above and beyond way? How would they know? You know, it's similar to when you get married, right? What if you never told your wife that you loved her after the wedding day, right? <laughs> so here comes the bride. You kiss the bride. Honey, I love you. I'm so thankful for you. And then seven years later, she's, she's leaving you and she says, you don't love me. And you say, well, what are you talking about? I already told you I loved you seven years ago when we got married, right? Hint, you know, it wouldn't go well. But this is what we do with our current customers, this is what we do with them. We do not appreciate them. We do not value them. We do not invest in them. We do not touch them and engage them and thank them and remind them. We just don't do it. Or we, it, we might sporadically a little bit, right? Which isn't going to get the job done. So if scientific studies are not enough, right? That research paper and those other stats I gave you, I want to talk about math, right? Because who can argue with math? Nobody. Well, maybe Common Core tries to argue with math. I digress. I digress. Here's the deal. Let's talk about this. I'm going to teach you the story of two companies. So let's talk about Bob and Mary. Bob and Mary. Now, Bob and Mary, uh, they, they both own cleaning businesses, a home service company, let's just say. Okay. And Bob and Mary, they're, they're the same person. Okay. They're good at what they do. They have honor. They have integrity. They do the right thing when no one's looking. Right. They have, they have the same amount of customers. Let's say that they both start with a thousand customers and they both have that same average ticket of $250. And they both average the same amount of new customers as well. So you have two companies. You have Bob, you have Mary. They both start out with a thousand customers in their database. They average 250 bucks a job, and they both average 22 new customers per month, okay? Now, everything is equal. All things are equal except one tiny detail. There's only one difference 
and it makes all the difference. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. You see, Mary invests a tiny little bit of money into relationship marketing so that she can trigger the gratitude effect in her clients. It's a priority for her. She does it every day. It's very simple, but she does it every day. She's consistent. And Bob, Bob doesn't do it. It's not because he doesn't love his clients. He just doesn't know about this stuff, right? So he, basically, in other words, Mary is a farmer and Bob is a hunter, like I talked about a few minutes ago, right? Just to give you a visual aid. We're going to dive into a spreadsheet in a minute, and I'm going to break this down into great detail for you. But before I do that, I, I want to give you some uh, teasers here. After three years of doing a business, Mary's business is three times the size of Bob's, just from the relationship marketing. After five years, Mary's business is almost six times the size of poor Bob's. And after 10 years, this is where it gets uh, parabolic and ridiculous, Mary's business is 28 times the size of Bob's, right? So everything's equal, or is it? Or is it? How important is this idea of relationship marketing it's more important than you could possibly wrap your head around. It drives me crazy. People don't understand this. It'll change everything for you, I promise. It did for me. It's done it for many others. Open your eyes to this. I'm going to break it down for you. Let's look at the actual math in a spreadsheet. And it won't be boring. I'll keep it nice and warm and fuzzy and fun, I promise. Okay, so here we are in the spreadsheet. And I have this master input panel right here, if you can see my mouse, okay? What I'm gonna do, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, is I'm gonna put in all the things that are equal about Bob's business and Mary's business. It's funny, the spreadsheet says plumbing. I think I said cleaning <laughs> in the other part, but it doesn't matter. The point's the same. Bob and Mary both start with a 1,000 clients. We'll say over the last two years, they have both had 1,000 clients in their book of business, right? They're going to both average 22 new customers a month just from, you know, their website and just organic word of mouth stuff and whatever happens. And they both have the same average ticket. So each time they do a job, it's 250 bucks, and, and they make the same amount of money. They have the same amount of new customers every month and the same amount of starting customers. But here is where it gets weird. It gets very, very weird. You see, remember, Mary invests a little bit of money in what we call relationship marketing, which is like a neutron bomb powerful in your business. And what she does, she invests 2%, we'll say, of her revenue into relationship marketing, okay? Um, but here, here's the result of investing in following up, thanking her customers, getting on the phone, sending them appointment reminders, you know, sending them a Christmas card, you know, sending them a little unexpected email or a gift or whatever, all the relationship marketing stuff, which I'll break down later, the result of that is that she has a higher repeat rate. Mary has a 60% repeat rate. Um, and that means that you know 60% of the people in her book of business will uh, call her back and do business again with her. Now, this isn't even taken into account the referrals she's going to get, which would be massive by having a relationship marketing campaign. I'm only talking about her own book of business, loving on those people. Now, Bob, on the other hand, he does a good job, but he only has a 25% repeat rate. And these numbers, I didn't just make up arbitrarily. I actually pulled them from Joe Kowalski, who's the founder of Service Monster. It's a ginormously successful CRM. They have thousands and thousands of customers from all over the world, and they aggregate and can track the data of people's actual repeat rates, which is amazing. This is amazing data. So let's look at Bob real quick, okay? So he does no follow-up. He doesn't check in on him. He doesn't send him an appointment reminder. He doesn't say, hey, we haven't seen you in a while. We miss you. What's going on? He doesn't ask for referrals. He doesn't do anything. Uh, but he's a good plumber. He's a good guy, right? He's a good dad. Here's the deal. His first year, he does 128.5 in revenue, right? But Mary, in the same scenario, would do 216,000 in revenue. Now, she also spent $4,300, which is 2% of her revenue on relationship marketing. You know, maybe thank you cards and appointment reminder cards and letters and stuff like that. So her net is only 211. It's still way, way higher than Bob's. But when it gets really weird is year three and beyond. So if you look at year three, we're comparing 144,000 to 450. It's a three time, three X difference already just because of this. You go to year five, like I showed you uh, a, a few slides ago, she's almost six times ahead of him. If you go to year 10, it's 28 times <laughs> ahead of him, right? She has this massive machine built because her customers are ravenous fans of her. They love her company. They love the employees of her company. They feel like they have a real relationship. They feel like they're caught up in something. And that's a result of relationship marketing. So 
for the skeptics of you out there, I'm going to adjust these numbers a little bit just to show you that this is, isn't just some kind of financial trickery. This is literal. And like I said, these repeat rate numbers are based on Service Monster's actual tracked stuff as far as averages for someone that follows up like a master compared to someone who doesn't ever follow up. But let's raise Bob's repeat rate to 30% even, right? And let's lower hers down to 50%, right? And let's say that it costs her not 2% of her budget. Let's say it costs her 5%, right? You're still going to notice dis a huge disparagement in the amount of growth that their companies have. Huge, huge. Right, so Mary in year one, she would spend almost 10 grand just loving on her current customers, just spending all of that money, constantly staying in front of them, constantly loving on them, sending them a gift, sending them a Christmas card, sending them this, sending them that, whatever the case may be, right? She still nets 181 and, and, and comes out way ahead of Bob. You go to year three, she's still almost double. You go to year five, she's more than double, two and a half times the size, right? Then you scooch up to year 10, look at this, 269,000 compared to 1.7 million. Guys, this stuff is just mathematical truth and it's a major oversight for most small businesses. So let's hop back into the presentation here. You just saw this spreadsheet, you saw the math. I hope that you're having some epiphanies and some light bulbs go off in your head. Uh, but here's the problem that I'm talking about. There are holes in your bucket. <laughs> you, you have a bucket. Your bucket is your book of business. I have a bucket. Everybody has a bucket. If you have a business, you have a bucket, man. Hear me. But you have holes in your bucket. You don't realize you have these holes because when you look in the bucket, yeah, there's some water in there. Like there's stuff in there. And, you know, you're busy and you're doing your thing and you still go camping on the weekends. But what you don't understand is that you're choking your own business to death. You're choking the growth and you will eventually go flat and not be able to grow because there's holes in your bucket. What we do is we spend all of our effort, money, especially money, in time focusing on new customers instead of spending time focusing on our current customers. Now, they're both good. They're both good. But but look at this this visual aid here, okay? The faucet, the spigot. That is deal flow. That is, you know, your Facebook ads producing a lead. That's your EDDM. That's your direct mail, your whatever you're doing, your door hangers, your canvassing, your newspaper ads, your whatever. Uh, Angie's List, right? Those are producing water uh, customers to go into the top of your bucket, but they're leaking out the bottom, as you can see. And you got to understand, this right here, the spigot, it does not matter until this is fixed. Very, very simple. It does not matter until this is fixed. I'm going to repeat that, okay? This right here does not matter <laughs> until this is fixed. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Let's look at the bar graphs again, right? We got the three-year, five-year, and 10-year, 28 times bigger of a business. I mean, even if you totally screw it up and you're far from perfect, you're still going to be way beyond Bob. Way, way, way beyond Bob, right? Way beyond Bob. So here's the deal. We overcomplicate things. We do. Small business owners, you know, we always have shiny object syndrome. We're always trying to be revolutionary with the type of equipment we use and everything we do in our business when really, if we get back to the fundamentals, we can crush it. We can win big time, big time. It's the fundamentals that really get the big companies big. And for some reason, little companies miss this or they just don't understand it or they don't believe it. Maybe they believe it worked for someone else. It won't work for them. So look, there's all this stuff you can do, but we overcomplicate stuff. Plus we focus on the wrong things. I'm not saying, let me be very clear. I'm not saying that doing this stuff's bad. Of course it's not bad. It's awesome. You should do all this stuff or do the few things that you're very best at. We have to market our business, right? So I'm not saying not to market your business. What I'm saying is marketing your business doesn't matter if you have holes in your bucket. It doesn't matter. It's it, Marketing your business is not step one. It's step two. Step one is having a foundational, uh, a foundation laid in your business, okay? A foundational principle that you will invest in, love on, engage, follow up with, and remind your current customers that you exist. And what we're doing is we're creating marketing overwhelm for no reason. And if you don't want to call it marketing overwhelm, that's fine. It's marketing overwhelm or it's just general overwhelm or our business is flat, we're stressed out, we don't have the financial situation we wanted, there's all this uncertainty, there's ups and downs in our season because we market only when we're slow. It's a disaster. I lived that disaster. I'm speaking from firsthand experience myself, right? So Josh, how do I fix it? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly how to fix it, okay? No fluff. I'm not gonna you know, leave out all the good stuff and say you have to pay for something, none of that. This is free. 
I'm going to tell you what to do. If you do it, you will crush it. Okay. So we're, we're going to welcome ourselves to the no fluff zone here. <laughs> we're going to talk about how to do it. Now, your, your marketing plan, your relationship marketing plan, it has to contain three things. It has to be simple. It has to be organized and it has to be consistent. Now that sounds easy enough, right? I'm going to break down all three of those uh, items right now. So simple. We have to keep it simple. We don't need to overcomplicate it, right? Throwing and catching, blocking and tackling. It's the fundamentals. It's, we don't have to run trick plays and complicated things for business work. You need to send thank yous to your customers. You need to call them. You need to uh, follow up with a newsletter or a letter or an email or something just thinking about you. How are you? Checking in with you. A lot of companies, especially service companies, like to use do-it-yourself tips. So if you're a carpet cleaner, maybe you tell them how to get a stain out of something using household stuff they have around or whatever. The purpose is just to stay top of mind with people so they don't forget you. Literally, they forget who you are. You're awesome. They loved you when you did it. You leave. They don't remember the name of your company, okay? They they go Google, you know, cleaning again or plumbing again or HVAC again, and they just, they just don't remember, right? There's no relationship. Appointment reminders, we miss you. Those are very uh, successful as well. And when we keep it simple, look, here, here's what I mean. Now, you can do those things I just said with postcards, letters, emails, and phone calls. Very simple. You have access to all this stuff. It's very inexpensive. All of these things are inexpensive. Emails are free. Phone calls are free if you're going to do them yourself. Letters are the most expensive thing on here, and they're like a dollar or two bucks or something, right? Postcards are cheap. You have to just uh, actually do it, but it does not have to be complex. It has to be simple. Uh, get organized. This is a trickier one for some people, but it's still not that big of a deal, okay? And the little cowboy in the bottom, that's a guy shooting from the hip. And the reason I put them on there is because you can't do that. You can't shoot from the hip. You have to have a plan, man. You got to get organized, at least a little bit organized. If you're the person that has, you know, McDonald bags all over their car, which I am on occasion for, for short periods of time, that's fine. But with this, don't, don't do it like that. Uh, and here's how you create a strategy. Here's how you get organized and create a strategy. You, you make a list of the different relationship types that you want to do relationship marketing with. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in a second. You also want to build a, a year-long calendar, possibly a two-year-long calendar. I know a lot of carpet cleaners have like a, a 12 to 18-month window where they're dripping on people because people go that long in between carpet cleaning, right? Whatever makes sense for you, you got to do it. And the third thing is, is you have to create some sort of a sequence, which is just a plan. It's a, What are we going to send these people? When are we going to send it? I'm going to show you how to do that too. It's very, very simple stuff. And when we talk about... Um, listing your relationship types. Like I mentioned before, you got your employees. You can literally build a sequence, a relationship marketing sequence to love on your employees. You can build them for your customers, of course, like we talked about. Also influencers, gatekeepers, people that you know are the in-between between you and maybe 200 clients or the head of a homeowner's association or some sort of a property manager or a realtor that has access to all this stuff for you. You need to work those relationships through relationship marketing, and you got to get organized. And then referrers, people that actually refer you stuff right now, how hard are you loving on these people, right? They're giving you free money. They should be your best friend. I know you appreciate it, but do they know that you appreciate it? And how often do they know that you appreciate it, okay? So let's look at a calendar here uh, and getting it organized with, just for example, in this one, an employee sequence. So there's your employee, the little guy right there. A uh, nice, clean-cut young man, right? Let's say that you want to engage your uh, employee quarterly. Quarterly. So four times a year, you're going to do something really strategic, uh, something thoughtful to say, you know what? Like, I'm super happy you're here. Like, it's a big deal that you're here. We, we love it. And so, look, you have a little calendar. You put their little face next to it. Whatever you do, a spreadsheet doesn't matter. A Word doc doesn't matter. Use your cell phone. Put in a reminder for yourself. Put the name of each employee you have. Whatever the case is. This is it, okay? Every quarter, you're going to do this, this, and that. You're going to do A, B, C, and D, and you're going to love on these people because it's going to produce you a massive, massive, huge return on your investment. People that feel valued, if you remember the studies we talked about, have a 240% increase in productivity, right? That's massive. Let's look at your customers. I'll get a little more granular and detailed on this one, right? So there's a little French guy looking customer guy with his little weird mustache. <laughs> so let's say that we want to contact our customers once a month, somehow. We're not always selling them stuff. We're just like, hey, how's it going? Like, 
you're awesome. Like, we really think you're cool. And here's a tip for this. And hey, we miss you. And hey, did you ever know about this? Or did you know we offered this service? Hey, we're just following up. Hey, all this stuff, right? So you throw them into a calendar. This is a sequence you're going to create for them. And then you determine what types of touches you want to give those customers during each of the month. So a postcard is a, a type of touch. An email is a different variation of a touch, a phone call, a letter, right? All these things, right? So let's say that you want to email them uh, four, five times a year, right? So you drop in, okay, we're going to do an email newsletter these months, and then we're going to, you know, do uh, some sort of direct mail postcard, like a thank you or an appointment reminder or something, you know, four times a year, which is pretty standard for companies that are crushing it, by the way. And let's say you're going to do that. And then let's say that you're going to throw in some letters. Letters are cool because it gives you more space to really like dial something in and really make your case for either a service you're offering or really explain something a little bit longer to people. And it's physical mail, which is awesome. And then phone. Look at all the phones popping up. The phone is the most underutilized tool ever for small businesses. People are terrified to get on the phone. And I get it. I get it. But if you want to grow, pick up the phone. These people like you. They love you, right? But they just don't think about you. You got to reach out. You got to keep the relationship alive uh, just like you would any relationship. So there's some ideas on getting organized, okay? Uh, the last step in getting organized is to build a sequence. To build a sequence. Now, I just kind of visually showed you uh, on the screen, but I'm giving you, a, giving you an example for employees and customers what a sequence could look like for you. And you can do all this stuff by hand. Like, you can do all of it by hand. It doesn't cost that much money. You just got to be uh, uh, intentional with it. So let's say that every month you write a short handwritten note. Now, this could literally be on a scrap piece of paper. It could be on like a 50 cent blank, you know, uh, tent fold card, just saying, hey, John, I noticed what you did this month. You're, you're awesome. Super happy to have you with us, right? Boom. Like, I know you would do that, but you don't because you don't have it on a calendar. You're not organized, right? And you, you don't keep it simple. Then let's say that every 60 days they get a personalized small gift. Maybe you give them a, a gas card or you give them an Amazon card or you give them movie tickets, something, right? But you need to put this on paper up front so that it actually happens, because I know you would do it, but you don't. And when you do, it's massively powerful. And then let's say every three months, you do a 10-minute checkup. And what that is, is you bring them into your office. You're like, hey, John, next Wednesday, can you come in a couple minutes early? I just want to talk with you. And you just say, how are you doing? How are you doing? I just want to check up with you. How are things at home? Things good? I just, is there anything I can do for you? How's your job? What feedback do you have for me? It's all about them. You make it about them, right? Every six months, you take them to lunch. Just go out to lunch. Hey, I'm buying you lunch. Let's go talk. Let's hang out, right? Twice a year, massively powerful relationship builder. And then let's say you give them a nice Christmas bonus or a large unexpected gift. Maybe they get, you know, a $200, you know, American Express gift card and, and, and a letter from you just saying how, how much you appreciate them. That's huge, right? Uh, and then as needed, public recognition employees respond to that hugely. When you pat their back in front of their peers, that's a huge deal that is often overlooked. Okay, let's look at customers. So obviously you're going to have a thank you postcard, a thank you email, and a, and a follow-up phone call after every job. After every job. That should happen. You know, it takes a few minutes and it can change everything for your business. You need to do this stuff. Those would be examples of an immediate uh, follow-up as part of a sequence. And then let's say three weeks later, you send them some other communication asking for referrals in like a sincere way. And guess what? They totally are going to give you referrals because you thanked them three different times. You followed up to make sure they loved what you did for them. Twelve weeks later, you know, that's a three-month mark. Maybe, maybe you send them a letter with a do-it-yourself tip. Not selling them anything, just staying top of mind. Six months, maybe just a we miss you or just checking in. Hey, do you need anything? Did you know we offer this service? And then 12 months, an appointment reminder. Look. Here's the, big, here, here's the deal, okay, guys? We're talking about how to do this stuff. It's just got to be simple, organized, and consistent. That's it. That's all it is. A tiny amount of effort, and you can do this. Now, we just talked about simple, and I just explained to you how to get organized in detail. You can go back and watch this again if you, you know, because I know I'm going fast. I'm trying to get through this. Let's talk about the last one, consistent. This is, this is simple. <laughs> just do it every day. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's the quote of the night. Like, put that on Facebook. That's the quote of the night. Just do it every day forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay? <laughs> Silly face to keep it fun. Silly face. Let's recap. I want to recap what we learned today because it's huge. It's huge, okay? You can double your business without chasing new customers. I'm not telling you to not market. 
I'm telling you that marketing doesn't matter unless you have the holes in your bucket filled, right? Okay, but you can double your business without getting any new customers. That, that's an amazing thing, an amazing thing. And nothing discussed here today was based on opinion or conjecture or something I just made up. This is facts, okay, this is mathematics, this is scientific research papers, statistics by you know national statistics providers. This is reality. If you overlook this, you're just being lazy. If you overlook this, you're not as motivated as maybe you thought you were before you got on here. You can't overlook this. You have to make it a priority. Stop what you're doing and make this a focus. If you have to cancel your whole Monday worth of work the next Monday to, to work on this, it's worth it. If you have to cancel a whole week worth of work to focus on this, it's worth it. It has to go to the very top of your list. Look, it's based on science. It's based on math. And my favorite, logic. I experienced this in my own business. That's why I had so much success. In, in the last you know, 18 months I had my company, we, we pretty much shut down all marketing because I could barely keep up. We couldn't hire people, train people, and buy enough trucks to keep up with the growth that was only from repeat and word of mouth. It was out of control because we made this a focus. Look, business owners make easy things complicated, and, and that's not good. And marketing overwhelm is caused by you focusing on the wrong things. Doesn't mean you're bad, doesn't mean you're bad at what you do, doesn't mean you're gonna fail. It just means you gotta turn your head and focus on the right things. Stop neglecting your business's number one most important asset ever, and the most important asset you will ever have, your current customers. You know, the greatest potential for growth in our business is with our current customers. That is the reality, my friends. That is the reality. And I know in your gut and your bones, you know it's true. You know it's true. Come on now. And let's just repeat this one last time. On average, a loyal customer is worth 10 times as much as their first purchase. 10 times. 10 times. But to get the loyalty, you got to earn it. To get the loyalty, you have to invest in relationship marketing so you can trigger the gratitude effect. If you're not doing that, you're not going to get the loyalty. So the science of the gratitude effect on the, the, the mind and the behavior of people, to recap, is it gets you more repeat business. It gives warm, fuzzy, unicorn positive feelings. It gets you more referrals. And it makes your customers an army of advocates for you. It creates a mind of advocacy. It's amazing. These psychological triggers are real and they work all the time. So again, we also, we tend to think like a lion uh, and we think that we have to chase the gazelle. We think we need to do that so that we can get to the business growth we want, so we can get the money, but that's not the case. In reality, we need to be the tomato farmer. We need to be this little cartoon guy who waters his plants, gives them sufficient sunlight, pets them, you know, takes his little finger and pets the tomato like, hey buddy, how you doing buddy? We need to do that with our customers in a non-creepy way, of course, I'm being silly. I hope you're getting this, guys. And the gratitude effect is not just for current customers. You, you need to apply the same exact principles at a minimum to your employees, but also to influencers, gatekeepers, property managers, people that are doorways to loads of business for you. Start today developing and nurturing the relationship. And then, of course, people that do refer you work right now, you need to be loving hard on those people. I mean, come on, come on. Um, we learned about math, right? We learned about how Mary was the farmer and Bob was the hunter. I showed you the spreadsheet just to recap of how Bob's business, you know, God bless his heart, uh, just wasn't working right. And he doesn't understand why, but Mary, after 10 years, after a decade, had a 28 times bigger business than Bob did, okay? Because when you only focus on this, the water, you can't grow. You don't grow. And you can only get a bigger bucket for your business after you fix your current bucket. Because your, your current bucket is not going to get big enough, right, uh, to overflow. And when you scale and grow your business, you grow your customer list, the way it gets really big, the way you get thousands and thousands and thousands of customers is by keeping them in there, by keeping them, keeping them, having low attrition, right? You don't want people leaving you. You don't want people forgetting about you. You don't want people shopping your price around. You want loyalty, and you can have it if you trigger the gratitude effect through relationship marketing. And we also learned about my bus. The bus where I ran over a monkey, which is insane. And then it got stolen by some mean person in Central America. I have no idea where the bus is. I hope she's doing well, but she probably got chopped up in 100 pieces and sold in Nicaragua. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna finish up with objections, okay? When I talk to people about this, when I teach them, this is what I hear. Josh, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time. Are you nuts? You don't have time to not do it, period. I'm not gonna be nice here. 
Stop doing other stuff and do this instead. Don't tell me you don't have time. If you sat through this, uh, this workshop to this point and you're telling me you don't have time to do this, you're lying to yourself. It's just not true. I don't buy it. It's false. You do have time because you need to make the time. People that say they don't have time, what they really say is, I don't see the value in making time to do it. And the whole point of me making this thing, which took hours and hours and hours and hours, is to show you that it's totally worth it. And you can't even argue your way out of it. Like, do it. So I, I reject that objection. The next one is, I don't have the money. This is similar to the other one. What people say when they don't have the money is, I don't understand or see a clear path to the return of my investment. I don't see a clear path. It's not clear to me that this is worthy of me spending my money on it. They don't mean they don't literally have the money or they can't find a few dollars to do relationship marketing. That is just almost never true. Almost never. Because if I told you, look, hey, give me a give me $100 and I'll give you $500. And, and you don't even have $100, you will find it. You will find it. You'll go sell your furniture and give me 100 because I'm giving you 500 back, right? That's what this is. This is like a license to print money. If you don't have the money, go find it. Go sell something. And then you'll have the money. That, that is how serious this is. This isn't just some you know, suggestion like, hey, you should try this out. You should give this a shot. This is way beyond that. This is a foundational thing that's completely overlooked. I'm passionate about it, if you haven't noticed. And so I don't have the time and I don't have the money is a load of bull, in my opinion. I'm bad with technology, right? I don't know how to do an email newsletter. I don't know how to, you know, use, you know, the apps to do this stuff or send the direct mail or whatever. Look, this is slightly more valid, but still it's a cop out. You know, with YouTube, with all the free learning resources, you, look, invest an hour in learning how to do it. You don't know how to use an online spreadsheet? Ask someone that knows how and say, hey, I'll buy you a coffee, teach me. I mean, look, we don't take this seriously enough to put the effort in to know how to do it. If you're not good with technology or you don't want to learn another tool, I get it. But if you've really understood the essence of what I taught here today, you're going to make the time. You're going to find the time. And the other one is I already have too much work. Now, this could go either way. If your business is everything you always wanted it to be and you're content and you're satisfied, then yeah, don't worry about it. Why, why overcomplicate your life? If you have everything, you already are at scale to where you want to be, don't worry about it, right? But I will tell you that uh, if you're not growing, you're dying. If you're not going up, you're going down. Businesses rarely stay totally flat. They're either in decline or they're growing slightly, right? So I'd, I'd take that with a grain of salt. The other thing is, is if you don't want to have a huge business, that's fine, but you should want to have a profitable business. So let's say you do 200,000 a year and you don't want to have a million dollar business. That's great. That's awesome. But don't you want to do 200,000 in the most profitable, lowest amount of working hours way possible? You can do that by investing in relationship marketing uh, and then slowly weeding out the lower, uh, the less profitable jobs and replacing them with more profitable jobs. That's how you tweak and optimize that type of a business model, by the way. Okay, so in closing, what if I told you that I have a solution that literally solves all of the problems I just said? It literally does everything I just suggested that you do with your clients. What if I told you that? What if I had a solution that automates the entire process of relationship marketing? All of it. I'm talking with your employees, with your customers, with the gatekeepers, the influencers, the referrers. What if you could you know, push a button and it was done for you? What if you could send a full year's or even two years worth of follow-ups to everybody that's important to you, your clients, your employees, everybody? What if you could do that in 30 seconds? What if you could trade 30 seconds for a year worth of dripping on and investing in genuine personalized relationships with all of those people. How incredible would that be? What if you could send thank you cards, direct mail, postcards, greeting cards, gift cards, Starbucks, Amazon, iTunes, actual physical gifts like a box of brownies and cookies and popcorn and pretzels and chocolate almonds and Utah truffles and all this stuff. What if you could send all that stuff spread out over the course of a year from you to your employee, from you, to all of your customers, from you, maybe the gifts to all your VIP customers, the big spenders. What if you could do that in less than 30 seconds? What if I told you it was inexpensive? It was very, very simple that we would actually hold your hand and walk you through how to learn it in less than a half an hour, 20 to 30 minutes. We teach it to you. It's very simple. And that it's automated. Is that something that would be worth looking at to you? That's the question for me to kind of wrap up this workshop, okay? Is that something worth looking at? Well, if, if you don't think so by now, then I have failed you. I failed you.
because the hint here is, uh, yeah, yeah, it's totally worth looking at, Josh. Of course it's worth looking at. Of course it's worth looking at. So here's the deal. I created a software tool that does all this stuff. It's called SendGym. A lot of you guys already know what that is. Or you've heard of it. You know what it is, but you don't really understand what it does. You don't understand the, the, the fission, the neutron bomb of shockwave that can go through your business if you properly use SendGym, if you understand how to do it. And look, I'm not selling anything during this workshop. It's totally free. I want you to share it with your friends. But uh, I am going to point you to an additional short training, an additional 10-minute video where I actually break down the pricing of SendGym, show you how it works, show you what it does, answer frequently asked questions, and make a special offer to you if you do want to buy it. But keep in mind, everything we talked about today, every single thing, you do not need SendGym to do what I just discussed. What SendGym does is it just automates and makes the entire process simple. Think of it like this. When you bake cookies, okay, when you bake cookies, I ask people this, my wife asked me this, Josh, what's the most important ingredient when you bake a cookie? I said, sugar. And a lot of people would say sugar, right? Uh, she said, no, Josh, it's salt. And I was like, what are you talking about? But then I thought about it. I'm, I'm no chef. But salt is the thing that, it's kind of the unsung hero for most foods. It's the thing that extracts the flavor out of the cookie. It makes the sugar taste like delicious sugar. It makes the steak taste like steak, right? That's what salt does. Now, send Jim what it is. It's salt. It's the salt of your business. If you're a good person and you run a good business and you're following up, send Jim is the salt that will make the relationship between you and your customers taste the best it can, feel the very best it can. It's an unbelievable thing. And, you know, if you're running your business without any salt right now, it's like baking a cookie without salt. It's going to be a disaster. It's not the same. I hope that makes sense. Look, just click the link below the video and you can learn about SendGym if you want to. If not, then just you're welcome because this is powerful stuff. Um, click the link below and you can learn about it. And you can learn how to use SendGym to trigger the gratitude effect, okay? Because what it does is it causes your business to have parabolic growth. And I wasn't going to use that word because it's kind of fancy, but it's kind of epic too. Parabolic, right? Parabolic, massive growth when you trigger the gratitude effect. So again, click the link below or you can go to sendjim.io forward slash grow. Thank you so much, guys. I'm super, super happy to hang out with you. I hope I provided value to you. Thank you for watching The Gratitude Effect, The Science of Business Growth.